Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at Finn St. Joseph checking team number 2767 Strike Force. From last year, made it to Fimstein, an absolutely phenomenal robot. We got a couple district wins last year as well too. Take a look at their robot. It is always impressive every single year. Strike Force, amazing capabilities going on with their end effector. You gotta look at their monstrosity that they have here of their entire arm, absolutely cool. Some really cool 3D printing as well too. By the way, to help me speak more about this robot on Strike Force is Alex, Jacob, and Peter. And once again, Strike Force love this team building robots every single year. We're also gonna check out a little bit more about their swerve coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge-up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. So let's start out with uh, your intake here. So you got a nice intake on their side. I love wide intakes. We actually seen less and less of teams this year. So I'd love to hear more about why this was a good fit for you, Alex. And then we'll go into your end effector as well. Yeah, so we've had, we had a wide intake uh, for 2020 and 2022 and they worked really well. And we weren't quite sure about it for um, our 2023 year, but the more that we got into it, the more that we realized that this is a great way to pick up the cubes because they're soft like the balls. Um, from the past years. Uh, so what we have is we have uh, behind these belts or under these belts are these 3D printed little, I guess they just go over top of the aluminum bar that we have there and it keeps our belts nice and tight on there. Can you, can you deploy the intake? And is your team, are you uh, just doing cones from here or do the cubes come in? Uh, cubes only come in through here. No cones go through here. What? Yeah. So this is how it works. And then do you want to feed the Cuban? And so then it grabs it here. Yeah, and so then it will go up to shelf or um, up to the uh, stairs in which we put the cubes on and drop it off there. These wheels right here are to just grab the, um, to grab the cube better so it doesn't just slip away from us. We actually had quite a few designs for the end effector. Um, the main two were, it, it was more of a claw. Last time we had two pieces of the um, poly here that were like forks that um, would go like that together and hold it. But uh, that wasn't enough to like actually grab the cone. And so we found a really cool gecko tape. It's um, feels like gecko skin. And it basically, it was really good for holding the cones and gripping it. But we decided with the wheels, um, because with these, you can keep rotating them in inwards to hold the piece in better. Whereas with the claw, with the stop motion, it's easier for the cones to fall out. Um, yeah, we have the Magic Johnson here, which it's that that won't move like that doesn't move unless it's told to. It's really, really strong there. Just a quick thing, especially with like the deploying, um, we actually went to a bag motor also, which is not very common that oh, you actually yeah, see. Yeah. Uh, but the basic thing is we didn't want something very high speed. And you know, it's a little bit of weight to kind of, sometimes bag motors can smell a bit too. So it's not really just a high priority. We don't need like a VEX like 50 motor or anything like, or a Falcon motor. Um, but we still have a Falcon motor actually on running the flat belts of the intake as well. Um, but yeah, definitely don't want to actually deploy it as far. And then we also don't want it out of control for the actual cube to actually fling out. Uh, we did still s leave space actually in our area because it would be better to have the cube exit than rather get trapped inside and then we can't pick up another item or game piece because that would have penalty results. Yeah, it, it's kind of convenient having the polycarb there because we actually can see inside as the pit crew because that was a big dilemma that we had at the beginning with the actual gearbox slash like elbow section of this end effector. 
uh, with the big thing about it was the teeth for the gearing kept breaking with the weight of actually this end effector out. Although this is a carbon fiber shaft, um, it still was a amount of weight that it kind of broke down the gears. So what we did was we switched it out with actually timing um, belts, which are on both sides of here, running still on one Falcon motor, but basically still giving that more surface area of grip. And it's definitely helping with like the tension of it, especially when the arm is like full out. Well, they're getting that going. Talk to me about uh, when you're looking from a design perspective on this, like how did you end up coming up with this solution? Because we've seen, uh, you know, multi-stage elevators, cascadings uh, out there. Like how did you end up coming up with this was the right solution for your team? So when it really came uh, first off was actually our experience from previous years. So when it came to, let's see, 2018, 2019, we actually had elevators. We also used carbon fiber elevators as well. So we kind of had that experience of that was very comfortable for what we could build. Um, we only have, you know, so much time to actually build a robot. So the comfortability of actually having an elevator was effective for our part. And it was also very reliable. We wanted a very reliable robot that could be scoring at a high pace. Um, we also were aware that you know, having a tall robot over the charge station may be problems. Um, but with that, we made sure it was carbon fiber and we had lighter parts. As well with the um, sector uh, gear basically running down here. Uh, we'll give an example when we do the coating. Uh, but this is what actually helps bring that piece closer to the third level and second level as well, um, giving that outer reach. Um, so then it's not only relying on the actual end effector arm, but also the elevator as well. Talk to me, um, let's do a demo here, and then if you can tell me a little bit more how that sector gear works, you'd love to hear more about that. It's pretty wicked. Yeah, so the sector gear was printed through Mark Forge. Uh, has some onyx as well with laying with like Kevlar, uh, Kevlar and uh, carbon fiber. Uh, so we printed all these, and then this is actually just a clamped um, piece of 3D printed on the carbon fiber. We also well as like use like glue adhesives, you know, robotics, you gotta use a lot of glue. So uh, we have that. Um, injected in there to keep it it's more secure and that actually has been very helpful um, with not having the gears actually jump off or anything um, but it also as well gives us lead room to move the elevator forward so this is if we were going to the substation it would actually grab the game piece uh, this would come up to where the human player is holding the cone and then we're going to have sensors right here so when the cone enters it's going to break it and it's actually going to close the claw automatically so now it's attached to the claw and now it can be deployed um, down and it'll be taken over to the actual grid to score a point. Yeah, so we have a few autonomous routines. Our main one is we score a uh, cube. Uh, well, we score the cone first and then we score a cube. Sure. And then we try and go with balance on the uh, charge station. Uh, we've had success with that, but at comp it hasn't been working as good as it was at a shop. Yeah, and we're filming this pretty early in your comp too, right? So yeah. a lot of time still in order to do something like that. Uh, are there any other like maybe future plans you're looking at as well too from our autos? So we've been working on an auto balance that would we'd put at the end of our auton. So it would be at the bottom of the charge station and it would climb up and auto level itself based on the gyro inside of the robo reel. So. And uh, what, are you, what are you using from uh, your auto routines to program that? Any software in particular? Uh, no, we're just using the uh, gyro from the navx and uh whippy libs libraries makes sense i want to wrap up on here uh peter if we can go back to you and talk about your uh, sword drive uh, for your team i think sword custom sword is something that you know we've been covering strike for a long time we see so many more teams now using cots right uh, for this but your team has always done something kind of above and beyond what i think is past us talk to me what you have there as we wrap up on your robot yeah so for this past year we actually adjusted a little bit on our swerve uh, module so first off we actually have an order of aluminum base now that we actually attach the swerve on um, now we actually don't have like any suspension that's inside of the actual swerve components uh, that would actually run the wheel up and down so it would help with any hard impacts now it's actually this aluminum frame that we run on with like um with in, like when we attach it with the bolts, it would actually help with that suspension um, rather than the actual wheel components. The whole frame that's now completely um, has shock absorbent for any hard impact, especially when we're on the charge station going off and on. Yeah. We're going to need that, so that definitely helped it. And it's also an addition. This whole module is actually more lighter than our previous years as well. Still the same motors, still the same components with the actual wheel systems, but just the light ability and the different shock absorbent suspension. When Alex and I were talking earlier, I heard that there's no bearings on this. Is that correct? There is no bearings on this uh, motor as well. Yep. So we actually moved it um, because of um, just the, how much weight it took um, that it was able to, we're allowed to take that away um, and instead have a more 3D printed 
um, actual swerve drive. That's so cool. I, I love hearing just everything that goes in the strike force uh, every single year. Uh, just this whole thing is a complete package. And I can't wait to see it continue to perform on the field really well. So we wish you best of luck here. Thank you so much for talking to us about this. This is 27 6 10 strike force, and we wish you best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.